Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can perform all activities associated with your customers through the Customer Center. While there are many features available in the Customer Center, one of the most important parts of it is the Customers and Jobs list. This list is where you can add, edit, and display all of your customers' information, as well as information for any jobs that you create for each customer if you use the jobs features in QuickBooks. You may notice that this list is called the Customers and Jobs tab within the Customer Center and called the Customer Job List within Forms. Sometimes it is simply called the Customers List. It really doesn't matter what you call it, as long as you realize that it's all the same list within QuickBooks. If you have created a new company file in QuickBooks and have customers who owed you money as of the start date of your company file, then enter those people into the Customers and Jobs list right after you finish creating the company file. After you have done that, you can then add customers and jobs to your list as the need arises through the daily use of the program. To add a new customer to the Customers and Jobs list, first open the Customer Center. You can do this by clicking the Customers button in the icon bar, by clicking the Customers button in the home page, or by selecting Customers and then Customer Center from the menu bar. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of Control plus J to open the Customer Center and display the Customers and Jobs list. At the left side of the Customer Center window is a tab called Customers and Jobs. Click this tab to view the Customers and Jobs entered into the QuickBooks program. To add a new customer to this list, click the New Customer and Job button that appears above the Customers and Jobs tab at the top of the Customer Center window. From the small drop-down menu that appears, click the New Customer Choice. That will open the New Customer window where you can enter the new customer information. In the New Customer window, type the name of the customer as you would like it to appear within the Customers and Jobs tab into the Customer Name field. Each customer must have a unique customer name value. If adding a customer who owed you money as of the start date of your company file, enter the amount owed by that customer as of the start date into the opening balance field. Then select the start date of your company file from the As of calendar dropdown. These fields are only used when adding customers who owed you money as of your start date. For any future customers you add, skip these opening balance fields. Next, click the Address Info tab at the left side of the window if needed. In this tab, you enter the customer address information as you would like it to appear on invoices and other customer-related documentation. Start by typing the name of the company, which can be different from the customer name field value, into the company name field. For individual customers, Enter their name into the Mr. Ms., First, Middle Initial, and Last Name fields. You can enter the customer's job title into the Job Title field. Then enter the customer contact information you wish to record into the next eight fields available. There are eight data fields shown by default. However, for each field, you can select what data to record by choosing the name of a data field from the drop-down field labels shown. Then record the associated customer information within the adjacent data field to the right of each drop-down field label. The data fields shown by default are, from top to bottom and left to right, main phone, work phone, mobile, fax, main email, cc email, website, and other one. Your choices of alternate fields for which you can substitute the default information are home phone, alternate phone, alternate mobile, alternate fax, alternate email 1, alternate email 2, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, URL 1, URL 2, URL 3, URL 4, Skype ID, other two, and other three. 
In the Address Details section at the bottom of this tab, you can enter billing and shipping address information for the customer. Type the customer's billing address directly into the Invoice slash Bill to text box or click the Edit button to the right of the Invoice slash Bill to field and then enter the billing address into the fields within the Edit Address Information window that appears. If you choose to enter the address information into the Edit Address Information window, click the OK button when finished to display the address you entered within the Invoice slash Bill to text box. If the shipping address is the same as the billing address that you entered, click the Copy button to copy the billing address into the Ship to text box to the right. If they are not the same, you can enter the shipping address directly into the Ship to text box. In QuickBooks, you can create and save multiple shipping addresses for each customer. You can add a shipping address by clicking the Add button to the right of the Ship To text box. In the Add Shipping Address Information dialog box that appears, enter a name for the shipping address into the Address Name text box. You will then type the address into the Address, City, state or province, zip or postal code, and country or region fields. Now if you are creating multiple addresses, check the default shipping address checkbox of the address you want to set as the default shipping address. To save the address, simply click the OK button. You can add more shipping addresses by repeating the process until you have entered all of the necessary shipping addresses for the customer. Also note that you can select a shipping address from the Ship To drop-down to display it within the Address field within this tab. You can then use the Edit and Delete buttons that appear to the right of the displayed shipping address to edit or delete the shipping address information shown if needed. To continue entering customer information, click the Payment Settings tab at the left side of the New Customer window. On this tab, enter the default payment information for the customer. You can enter the account number you have assigned to this customer if you use account numbers by typing it into the account number field. To assign a credit limit to this customer, enter their credit limit amount into the credit limit field. Next, use the Payment Terms drop-down field to select the default purchasing terms you want to assign to this customer. If the customer has a special pricing level assigned to their purchases by default, select it from the Price Level drop-down field. If you think you will need to use pricing levels, please review the separate chapter on price levels. You can select a default delivery method for customer forms from the Preferred Delivery Method drop-down. If you accept customer payments through the Intuit Payment Network system, you can choose how you want the payment links to display within customer invoices by selecting a choice from the Add Online Payment Link to Invoices drop-down field. You can then select a default payment method for this customer by selecting one from the Preferred Payment Method drop-down. If you select a credit card type from this drop-down, you can enter the customer's cardholder information into the credit card number, expiration date, name on card, address, and zip or postal code fields that appear within the credit card information section. Click the Sales Tax Settings tab at the left side of the new customer window to continue. On this tab, use the Tax Code drop-down to choose whether the selected customer is taxable or non-taxable. If the customer is a taxable customer, then choose the default sales tax to apply to their purchases from the Tax Item drop-down. We will look at collecting sales tax in a separate chapter which you should review if you will be collecting sales tax. If the customer has a resale number for use, you can enter it into the resale number text box. 
After entering the customer's sales tax information, click the Additional Info tab at the left side of the New Customer window to continue. On this tab, you can enter a customer type into the customer type field, or select a previous entry you have made from the field's drop-down list. The values you enter into this field can be used as a way to filter customer reports you create. You can use the Rep drop-down to assign one of your sales reps to the customer. In the area to the right of this tab, you can enter any information into the customer's custom fields that you have created. We will examine creating custom fields for customers, vendors, and employees in Lesson 3.6. If creating a new customer, you are finished with data entry at this point. You won't use the Job Info tab, as that is only used when creating a new job for an existing customer. To finish adding the customer to the Customers and Jobs list, click the OK button. You can edit an existing customer's information in the future if their information changes or if you need to enter additional customer data. To edit a customer within the Customers and Jobs tab, select the name of the customer in the list whose information you wish to edit. Then either double-click the name of the customer in the Customers and Jobs tab, click the Edit button that appears at the right end of the Customer Information section to the right, or simply right-click the customer name within the Customers and Jobs tab and select the Edit Customer Job command from the pop-up menu that appears. Now performing any one of these actions will then open the Edit Customer window. You can then edit any of the information shown in the tabs within this window and click the OK button to save your changes and close the window when you are finished. Like accounts, after you have used a customer in a transaction, you cannot delete them from the Customers and Jobs tab. Instead, you can inactivate customers you will no longer need to view to hide them within the list. Please review Lesson 3.8 to learn how to activate and inactivate customers. If you did, however, create a customer record you did not use and no longer need, you can delete it. To do this, select the entry to delete within the Customers and Jobs list, and then select Edit and choose the Delete Customer Job command from the menu bar. You then need to click the OK button in the confirmation message box that appears to permanently delete the selected customer entry. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.